Today we're back with a really simple one. It's going to be a logo intro animation, but you could use the same technique for some cool looping animations if you want to do so. It's going to be simple simulation nodes. So with that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and we'll change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, and we'll select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now we'll press shift A and search for an icosphere and we'll simply plug the mesh into the group output. Now you can change the radius based on your requirements. I'm going to keep it at something like two meters and then I'll move it to the side and start messing around with it. So the first thing that I need is on each of these points, there has to be a smaller sphere. So I'll press shift A and search for an instance on points node and I'll plug that in after the icosphere. And for the instance, I'll search for another icosphere, but this time I'm going to change the radius down to something really small. Let's go with 0.02 and the subdivisions I'll increase to something like three so that it's fairly smooth. Now I can plug this into the instance and this is what we have. Now 0.02 is far too small so I'll make it 0.1 and that seems like a good size. Now when we actually animate this we want these to rotate around this central origin. For that we can actually rotate this initial icosphere so I'll press shift and search for a transform geometry node and I'll plug that in after the icosphere before the instance on points. That way you can see that we can rotate it just like this and all the points follow which will be necessary later on. The next thing that we require is these points should form a trail when we actually rotate it like this. So to get those, we need to actually instance points wherever the new points are and keep the old points exactly where they are and scale them down by a little bit. So we can do that easily using a simulation zone. So let's simply plug the instance on point as the input to the simulation zone and take the output and plug that into the group output. Now whatever happens in the simulation zone is going to happen on every frame and the new geometry is going to be fed in as the geometry that's going to be worked with. So the first thing that we need to do is scale down the points. So I'll press shift a and search for a scale elements node or a scale instances node and I'll just plug that in right here and I'll reduce the scale from 1 to maybe 0.9. So now if we play the animation you can see how it slowly scales down all the way to 0. Now that looks great but we need to now add in new points wherever the points are that are rotated. So to add in new points we can press shift a and search for a join geometry node, plug that in right here and take this instance on points and plug that in right here. So that way every single frame a new set of points is added in and joined. So when we play the animation it'll look like nothing's happening but if we were to go back and just start playing around with the rotation you can see that there are nice trails being formed by all of these points and you can rotate them on any axis and the trails will be formed according to the rotation which is exactly what we need. So that's great let's bring that back to zero and then deal with the next part. The next section is something meant for optimizing because this might slow down if you have a very long animation or you have many points being present. So we need to delete the points that get a very small scale. For that we can delete points that are older than a certain age. So we need to actually capture the age. So let's go ahead and press shift a and search for a capture attribute node and plug that in right after this instance on points. Now this is the same geometry that we want to go into the join geometry instead of the one from here. So let's just remove this connection and connect this one up over here. Now we want to capture the age and we need to use this attribute as an input to the simulation input and we can just add a value of one to this. So let's press shift a and search for a math node and we'll simply add a value of one to this attribute on every single frame so that it gets older by one unit every single frame. Along with that, we don't want this to be a floating value. We want it to be an integer. So we'll change it from float to integer. Now with the simulation input selected, we can go to the side panel and go to node and rename this from attribute to age. And again, this has to be an integer. So we'll change the socket type to integer. Next, we can delete the points that are older than a certain value. So let's search for a delete geometry node, plug that in right here. And we have to compare if the age is greater than something. So let's search for a compare node plug that in after the add node and we want to see if it's greater than let's say 30 frames then it should be deleted so let's take this result and plug that into the selection but again the original value is what has to go into the simulation output so let's take this value and plug that into the age and not what comes out of the greater than node so once you have this setup correct when you play the animation and you move these around but everything is getting deleted together which means all of them are getting the same age value and that's because we haven't actually plugged the age into the age input for the simulation input so if we plug this in here here, then we should have it working exactly as we expect where we rotate this and they move and only the end trails that are very small get deleted off. So that works perfectly all right and is exactly as expected. So we have an optimized scene. Now we can simply finish off the node tree by adding in a set shade smooth node right after the simulation output and we can also set the material by using a set material node. Once we're done with that we can select the original material or the default material because we're not using that for anything else and then we can start the actual animation. For the animation we'll first go to the 
output properties and change the frame rate to what we want. I want it to be 30 frames per second and we can have the end frame at something like 420 so that it's a 14 second long animation. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding I'm going to change the container to MPEG4 and output quality I'll choose perceptually lossless. Then on this transform geometry node I can change all of these rotations to zero on frame zero and then just hover over it and tap I to add in a keyframe. After which I'll go to frame 100 which is one third the way through my animation and I'll just rotate it on the x-axis by maybe 90 degrees and then I'll tap I. After that on about frame 200 I'll maybe change the x and the y to 180 and then I'll tap I and then on frame 300 I'll maybe make all of these 360 so that they all land back in the exact same position. So I'll hover over it and tap I. So now when you play the animation you can see how it starts rotating just like this and then after frame 100 there's another component of rotation added in which causes it to move in this nice manner and then after frame 200 you'll get another type of animation which is the z-axis rotation as well which causes very fast motion and that is essentially when we're going to add in our logo and with that it'll all stop moving at frame 300 and then the points just remain and the trail slowly die off but we don't want that we want the points to also die off so we're gonna have to make a few more changes to the node tree and that will do before this join geometry we'll search for a scene time node and we'll check if the frame is greater than 300 then we'll add nothing to the join geometry so i'll search for a delete geometry node as well as a compare node so that we can compare if the frame is greater than a value of 300 and if it is then the result is going to be true and we're going to plug that into the selection so everything is deleted otherwise nothing is going to be deleted we can take this geometry plug that into the geometry here and then remove this connection over here and plug this into this join geometry remember the way i'm deleting connections is by using control right click which is a shortcut that has to be enabled using the node wrangler add-on which can be enabled from your edit preferences add-ons menu so now let's go back to frame zero and just replay the animation so that we can see what's happening and we should see that after we reach frame zero all the trails slowly die off but even the points slowly go down and become nothing after 30 frames beyond that because we have all of these points that are greater than 30 also being deleted as well so now that that's done we can start off with the actual texturing so let's switch this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and because we use the default cube itself the default material is already present we can rename this to trails and essentially we're going to use a node that we haven't used any time before which is the actual geometry node and not the geometry nodes editor. So usually to get a nice gradient, I used to use the texture coordinate, but the problem with the texture coordinate is that it sticks to the object. On the other hand, the geometry node gives out the position using the world coordinates. So even if we move this around, the texture stays put. So we can actually visualize this by plugging the position into the base color. And now if we go back to frame zero and switch over to our viewport shading of render, we can see how based on the actual position of the points in 3D space, the spheres are colored when they actually move so you can see this magenta one slowly shifts into the red region over here and it slowly takes on that color as well so this is based on the 3d position that all of these are in so we can actually take this and give it our own colors by searching for a color ramp if you want to use six different colors for the six different quadrants you can always use a separate xyz node and plug that in right here and then use three different color ramps and then mix the colors together by adding them or whatever but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to use two different colors and i'll choose whatever colors my logo is also using so i'm going to use the blender logo for this tutorial so since the blender logo is orange and blue i'm going to take this black slider and make it a nice blender blue and i'll take this white and i'll make it a nice orangish color and i'll just drag this in a bit and then when i play the animation i can see how many of these are orange and how many of them are blue i think that too many of them are blue so i'll just bring this orange in even more and that way i get approximately an equal distribution so that looks fair enough now instead of plugging this into the base color i'll actually plug this into the emission and i'll change my render defaults by going into my render properties and switching on bloom and screen space reflections then the base color i'll change all the way to black and i'll go to the world properties and change the background all the way to black as well now i'll switch off overlays and this is what we have to make the bloom even stronger i'll just increase the emission strength so something like 50 will make it really nice and bright once you're done with that you have to actually animate the logo coming in so for the logo coming in i'll just add in any image in my case i'll use the blender logo and if you want to use an image as a plane you have to go to your edit preferences add-ons and search for import images as planes once you have this checked you can go ahead and press shift a 
and search for image and choose image as plain and choose your image. For my Blender logo, I'm going to make sure that I change the material type to emit because I'm not going to be using any other lights in the scene. And then I'll check import images as plain. So then I'll go ahead and just make this principled PSDF values different by increasing the emission strength to maybe something like two. And I'll also increase the metallic value all the way to one and the roughness all the way to one as well. Now we don't want this to be present all the time. I want it to slowly fade in. But the problem is if we just fade in using the alpha value by searching for a math node and plugging that in over here, you can see that these particles, even though they're going behind the object, it can and still be seen and that makes it look like this is not actually in 3d and we're just slapping this video on top of our logo so that's why i don't really like this i want it to be completely solid when it appears so instead of having this add value as a value that goes from minus one to one to make it appear i'm going to keep this at one itself but I'm going to use the texture coordinates of this logo that will add in. So I'll press shift A and search for a texture coordinate node. And if I separate out the object coordinates using a separate XYZ node, you can see that the X axis value is a gradient that goes from black to white. Now we can simply add to this value to make it seem like the gradient is moving. So let's take this add value, press shift D and plug it in here. And now you see when you're adding a value of one, everything is visible. But then as you slowly reduce the value, it seems like the gradient is slowly going from the left to the right. So that is exactly what we're going to be animating. And you have to go from a negative value to a positive value. So let's plug this into the second socket of this add value and then control shift click the principled PSDF. And now as we go into a negative value, you can see that the gradient is completely gone and we can just bring that in to make it appear. Now, even this is giving me a gradient in this region and I want it to be much sharper. So to remove that gradient effect as it transitions in, I'm actually going to press shift A and search for a color ramp node and I'll switch this from linear to constant and then I'll just drag this in so that we get a fall off of whether it's black or white but because we're doing this and clamping it off we have to change this from add to subtract so that we can subtract a value of one to make this value zero make sure to clamp this so that it remains at a max or a min value of zero itself and doesn't go to any complete negative value so now you can see it's completely gone and as you drag it in it slowly comes in which is perfect so let's actually animate this and we wanted it to come in between frame 100 and 80 to maybe frame 240. So on frame 180, we'll bring this value just low enough such that the logo is not seen. So maybe a value of 1.35 is working for me. So I'll hover over it and tap I. And then on frame 240, I'll go ahead and start decreasing the value just till the entire logo is seen. So that is happening at a value of minus 0.03. So I'll hover over it and tap I. Now the default interpolation is Bezier, which means it's going to start off slow and then speed up in the middle. I want it to be linear. So I'll press T linear and that way we'll get a linear your animation of it slowly fading in over time. Now to also play this back at a faster pace, what you could do is go to the physics properties and with the actual geometry node object selected, you can go to the simulation nodes tab and click bake, but to bake, you have to save the file. So press control S and save the file. Once it's saved, you can bake the animation. Once the simulation is done, you can go to playback and choose frame dropping so that you get a realistic idea of the speed at which your animation is animating. The last thing that you could do is add in a background for nice reflections. So I'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane. Then I'll rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and I'll press G X to move it back just behind all of my trails. Then I'll press S to scale it up. And I'll press this new button to create a new material and I'll make it metallic with a roughness value fairly low at maybe 0.2. I also don't want this light at all. So I'll select it and delete it. And that's actually all you have to do to create everything for this animation. To set up your camera, you can select the camera and press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R Y 90 and then R X 90. Then you can press G X to bring it back and then press zero to go into your camera view and continue by pressing G X just till you're able to envelope everything. Once you're happy with the positioning of your camera, go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a useful tutorial for you and you learned something very interesting. If you want, you could definitely convert this into just a looping animation with only the trails being formed and them forming the balls again, or you could have the logo animation as well. It's really up to you and I'm sure you'll find creative methods of implementing all of these techniques from this video. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.